Hello, my name is Joe Naus, and I'm here today to show you how to use Integrated Architecture Builder to migrate the older Slick 500 hardware platform to the newer 5380-5069 Compact Logics family. To start, we're going to hit New Project. We'll give our project a name. So use SLC to Compact Logics. Under Migration Assistance, we have a Slick 500 wizard. So we'll pick this and create. So now the software is asking us to add a chassis. I'll just use the default name. So now on top you have the SLC hardware, and in the bottom is where you'll see the 5069 hardware. We do have options here, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to replace all the SLC 500 components with 5380-5069. We'll make our chassis size 7. And the conversion kit gets checked by default when we're replacing everything with 5380. So the first thing we'll do is pick our processor for the slick. We'll pick this L533 module. This is a slick 503, so I'm going to hold down with my left mouse key and drag it up to slot 0. Now we're being asked what conversion kit chassis size we should use. I'm going to pick 7 slot. For the processor, I'm going to pick the L310ER to give me some a little more memory to work with, and it supports 8 local I.O. cards. Now you can see it's taking shape down below. Now after we've done the processor, we go to the I.O. module, and we're going to pick Digital. And our first card in our slick rack will be an IB16, so again we'll just drag that up. Then we'll pick a Digital Output card. I'll pick the OB16, drag that up. Now our slick rack is going to have an NI4 in it, so I'm going to drag this up. And then we'll say it has a NO4I for an analog output. Now we're going to say we have a couple AC cards, so I'm going to pick an IA16 for 16 AC inputs. And an OA16 for 16 AC outputs. Now you can see here that the FPD is added, and this um, allows you to separate the AC modules from the DC modules. So hit OK. Then let's generate hardware. Once the display disappears, we can go to the hardware tab down below here. And you can see here is our completed system. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the 5380 Compact Logics requires 24 volts to power it. And you can see there's two terminal blocks. One up here is called the Mod term Power Terminal Block, and down here it's called the SA Power Block. Mod stands for Module, and SA is Sensor Actuator. You can see over here on the right, Control Power Status and Field Power Status aren't satisfied. So let's add some power supplies for this. So I'm going to go to Control Power Supply. I'll pick the first one, which is a 5 amp. And you highlight the module on the left and just click on the right to bring it into under that power supply. And hit OK. Now we're going to do the same thing for field power, chassis specific. Choose another 5 amp power supply. And now I'm going to add the I.O. cards that require it. And there you go. Now some people may be asking, well, why do you have two power supplies here? Well, Rockwell recommends having a separate power supply feeding the module power terminal block and one for the SA power block. Because there's two different bus systems on here. The mod power basically powers the processor itself and then the circuitry for the I.O. cards. 
and SA, Sensor Actuator, is your field power, and that's a separate bus that runs along the bottom. If you use one power supply for both, if you have a problem with the power supply, your whole system goes dark. You lose control. And if you have a separate power supply for mod power and the field power goes out, there's diagnostics in the controller to tell you that there's an issue with the field power. And your I.O. cards will reflect that. So again, that's a reason why you'd want to have two power supplies. So that's what we have. Now, at this point, we can go to save. Then we'll go file and project BOM. Rockwell puts this notice out saying you have to check your work, that this is just a tool that may have mistakes. So it's always good to do a second check. And we'll just go to this view project checker to see what these messages are. You can see hardware is the only one that has the warning and the information, because that's all we built so far. And this is just saying you should manually check voltage, current, sync source types used in the slick I.O. hardware to make sure they're compatible with the new hardware. So again, this is just a notice to say that a second pass through checking those things are important. And the information really is saying that here, the controller rules that were used for this program are coded with version 31. And under information, the dimensions that are provided are for the chassis, power supply, and modules. But space and dimensions for external power supplies, conversion hardware, cables, and bend radius is not provided. So if you look over here on the right, you'll see dimensions for the rack. But this is for the processor and I.O. cards only, is what this message is really indicating. So once we're okay with that, we do have to go to file and project BOM one more time, go through that, and say continue generation of BOM. So now we have a listing of all our parts, software, and power supplies. At this point I can save it to spreadsheet we can open it now at this point again you'll have your listing in spreadsheet form again there'll be some messages again saying that you should check your work it's always good as best practice to look at like all the quantities to make sure they make sense so like for example IB16 OB16s got one of each one one there's our FPD so Looks like it picked up all our I.O. cards and, and then, you know, again, the conversion chassis and the conversion cables. Your software and your power supplies. So this concludes our video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Revere Electric for your modernization migration needs. Thank you.